Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel, and uh, we had a, a very intense, extreme geomagnetic storm in the last 24 hours. Uh, K-index reached 8 in a scale that goes up to 9, so that shows you how powerful it was. And if you uh, turned on the radio and thought that there was nothing on the band, so what was happening is the radio broken, well, it has to do with this. And uh, I often joke about it because... When I started listening to shortwave, I had no idea that the sun was affecting shortwave radio. I thought shortwave radio was a little bit like listening to local bands, local FM radio. It's always there, but it's not the case because signals come from far away and are dependent on how solar activity behaves and geomagnetic storms happen or not. So um, remember that the K index is an index that actually represents the state of the geomagnetics uh, field at a given time. And this, the K index goes from zero to nine. Um, we kind of take usually for, my, and my personal take on it actually is that two or less, usually not bad, propagation should be good. Of course, the closer it is to zero, the better it is, because each gradient, here, each time you actually up by one, there is some geomagnetic effect. So there could be some absorption of signals, uh, sometimes signals coming through the poles, or east-west signals can be attenuated. So you want to have the lowest possible. But in general, we kind of say, um, you know, some say three, because you see here that three is still green, but I've noticed that three, we are already have some effect. And of course, as it rises, and here you have the uh, color gradient, so you can see that it becomes yellow and red. Uh, so what happens is that usually what you have is green is quiet conditions, yellow is unsettled conditions, and red is storm level. Now, the uh, storm level, of course, uh, means that the geomagnetic field is really, really being uh, beaten by the uh, solar wind. Uh, because of a coronal mass ejection or faster solar wind than usual and so on. And that, of course, will affect the ionosphere. The ionosphere being very high up in the atmosphere, it immediately gets affected by the fact that all of these particles now can actually attenuate the effect of the ionosphere or even make it absorb the signals rather than reflect them like they usually are. So if you don't hear anything on the bands, what I suggest is to go to a website like spaceweather.com or here I'm on solarham.net and uh, the links to both websites are in the description below and check out the current conditions and usually this will give you an idea of how it is. I know a lot of people share these uh, pages where you see conditions and it says uh, what are the type of conditions of the different bands. I don't like really those in general. I rather uh, rely on the uh, K index. And also, uh, one of the things that you might not know is that the K index isn't the same measure everywhere around the globe. It's usually a K index of six, which is technically the first level of a geomagnetic storm, might actually be a K index of three or four at the equator. But it could be a K index of eight at, uh, you know, in Nunavut, Canada, near the, the poles, because it is very dependent on latitude. So the closer to the pole you are, the more you will see an effect that has to do with these the K index. So somebody that is up north or close to the south pole will see that a K index of three or four affects them a lot more than somebody that is close to the equator. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.